I brought to you by Digikey Adafruit. This week it's Nordic. Lady Ada, what is this week's new product introduction? Glad you asked. Uh, this is uh, the Nordic NRF 7002. It's their first Wi Fi chip. Very exciting. We love to cover the new stuff from Nordic. Uh, here we've covered like all the NRF uh, 52, 53. The 91 series, um, and now they're they're kind of heading in, they're, they're charting new territory. They're going into the um, Wi-Fi chipset zone with the N7002, so 7 series, which is Wi-Fi. And um, what's interesting about this is that this is a uh, Wi-Fi, like, accessory chip. It does, you know, there's obviously a microcontroller of some sort inside, but you don't write code for it. Instead, you sort of load a binary blob, and then you can communicate with this chip over SPI or QSPI, and it does like the Wi-Fi part for you. It's um, like a Wi-Fi module, but it's just like the chip. It's very simple, it's fairly inexpensive, um, and it's very powerful. It actually has a couple things going for it. Um, that Because a lot of people might be like, well, why would I use this instead of like an all-in-one Wi-Fi chip, um, like an Espressif? There, there's reasons for using the NRF 7000. We'll, we'll talk about what those could be. Um, so here's some details. Um, so uh first thing you know they put which i think is kind of the most interesting is it does uh two channels it does uh, both the 2.4 gigahertz standard and the 5 gigahertz and that's not usual um most wi-fi modules and chipsets only support um one uh, you know usually 2.4 gigahertz um another thing is um it has coexistence for like an antenna so it will not bash over like if you know it won't transmit 2.4 gigahertz data while the Bluetooth is trying to trans, uh, transmit at the same time and like thus uh, collide in the air. Um, you know, you have a coexistence uh, interface pin so it knows like, okay, now I can go and then they switch off uh, turn by turn. It can of course act as a station or an access point for um, provisioning. Uh, it has um, uh, uh, QSPI as the interface uh, or SPI. So it can be either like very simple or very high um bandwidth data transfer back and forth um and this is you know this is their glamour shop it also shows that outline is all the components that you need to run this so you have to you know your standard crystal a bunch of uh passives looks like you know one inductor a couple big caps some small caps and that's it it's it's very simple it's very integrated and then on the left you see um there's i think an antenna switch uh a very low cost uh Balen. And then you just put in your antenna, your 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz antenna, and you're good to go. Um, so the host connection, you know, as you see here, is you have the host MCU. They do target the um, NRF 53, I think the 52, and the 991 uh, cellular series at this time. Well, you know, you could use other host MCUs. I'll be honest, right now the code is really, like, optimized for their own. Um, you see uh, there is the SPI interface, there's the IRQ, uh, there's the buck enable, and then the coexistence interface. Um, so if your host MCU is, say, you know, like I said, an NR53, you have a Bluetooth antenna, you don't want it to send data at the same time or try to receive data while the Wi-Fi is uh, transmitting because you're going to get overwhelmed with the Wi-Fi signal. It just it just has a smart coexistence, um, which is quite nice. So it's it's well suited for using with their chips. Um, you will need a pretty beefy chip. So in this case, the NR53, which I think is a Cortex M33, if I recall correctly, um, and it has, you know, probably a mega flash and like a quarter meg of RAM. Um, you do have the entire Wi-Fi driver running on the NRF53, um, including uh, the SSL stack. Um, so, you know, it's, it's non-trivial. Um, you will need to have a good amount of memory to buffer your packets, send data back and forth um to the to the um the chip which has you know it has its own rx and tx buffers but like you're you're still gonna have to do quite a bit of work so you can't you can't run this on a low-grade microcontroller um you'll need something probably a cortex m0 at the least um to connect to, through their networking stack uh they do have code available um through the sdk which of course is really good there's Zephyr, so that's a uh, RTOS. It's very popular. 
Um, I do recommend it. Uh, I'll show later that there's an example that somebody got the Zephyr version working and they have a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. Uh, there's also OSAL. That's like a op operating system, something layer, uh, interfacing layer. So in theory, you could port this to other platforms um, if you wish. But again, a lot of people so far have been using um, either uh, they've basically, basically been using Zephyr within the NRF SDK. Um, so it's interesting like this is because you're like, okay, you know, like there's a separate chip and like, what's the deal? Why didn't they just make like a chip with one of their ARM Cortex cores inside? Um, but it reminded me a lot of the NRF uh, 8001. So the NRF 8001 is, for those who remember, was Nordic's like first Bluetooth chip. Again, like eight Bluetooth one first. And this was an SPI. Uh, you can see the SPI pins at the bottom to BLE converter chip. And this was like actually kind of like the first chip that allowed you to do something like this. Uh, previous Nordic had been doing like the NRF um, 24 series, which is about 2.4 gigahertz. And then they were like, we're so good at 2.4 gigahertz. So let's go and do Bluetooth LE. And so they did Bluetooth LE. And we, you know, there's books, I think that are even published about using this module. Um, one of the nice things about it, it was simple enough that you could um, connect it up to something like an Arduino. Uh, we have a bunch of projects. Uh, this is like an ancient project where, you know, you wire this up um, to an Arduino, uh, I think it was Arduino Nano or, or Pro Micro. I don't remember exactly what that board is. Some NeoPixels and you can control it through our app. Pro Micro, because I think that's the one that we helped, uh, we were credited on helping design it. Yeah, the Arduino Micro. Yeah. Right. Sorry. It's, it's been it's it's been a it was hot a minute. It's been a lifetime. It's been a long time. Um, and you know, it's funny, it's like you can have 20 characters, um, because I think that's the limit of the packet size that you could send through the NRF 8000. I mean, we could have had multiple packets, but it was, you know, that was the limitation. It's a very early implementation of Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, but this, you know, this was how you basically use Nordic stuff to connect to BLE, and then they very quickly um updated it and created the NRF 51, which was a Cortex M0 with like, I think 16 K of Ram, very minimal, but you know, just enough Ram that you could run the, the Bluetooth stack, um, the soft device on this Cortex M0, you could program it. It was like standalone. There was code that you could run that used the built-in Bluetooth interface. And then, you know, after the NRF 51, they improved it with the NRF 52, uh, which is a Cortex. Um, I think that was when they went to the M3 or M4. Cortex uh, 52840, which is an M4, and now the 53. So it's it seems like their natural progression is to start with the SPI separate interface, and then they build up, and then I, I have, you know, I don't work for Nordic. I can't speak to them, but it seems reasonable to me that they're going to um, update their design for the NRF uh, 7002 and eventually make a version that has an ARM Cortex inside, which would be really cool because um, Nordic is really, really good at low power, well-documented, stable API chipsets, peripherals, like they, their stuff is very high quality, um, very low power, and um, they have they have very good support for their API layers. They have like lots of very um, smart engineers that work for them. And so, um, you know, even though you, you can get cheaper Bluetooth chips than Nordic, you can't get better ones, right? So um, I think it is interesting that they're, you know, when they're, their approach to getting into the Wi-Fi spaces to um, go with something like that has dual uh, bands and has like this really cool interface and it's very like it's a very fully featured advanced chip um, and then they'll probably start integrating it afterwards. Um, there's also a development kit. Uh, so this features uh, on the right, you can see there's the NRF 7000 and then above that I think is the NRF 53. Um, and then uh, there's the native USB above it. And then to the left, there's kind of the Arduino mega-ish pinout zone. All the pins are brought out on the NRF53. Because uh, remember that the 7002 is just acting as a peripheral. Um, you can connect the like, shields and stuff to it. And there's a, um, a Sager J-Link uh, interface for debugging. So this is kind of their dev kits. They're fairly inexpensive. Um, then you can see there's uh, two antennas. There's a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz as well as RF test points. Um, yeah, here it goes. Sega debugger, debug ports, uh, built-in current measurement capability, um, 5340 SOC, antennas, antennas. And uh, so you can also test the um, coexistence stuff with that. Um, I also you know, just kind of peeked around. It, this chip is quite new. Like really, I think they just 
put them in stock. Um, I did see uh, Fanstel um, is going to be releasing modules. So that's going to be kind of nice because you just pop it on, connect it to SPI, and like this is ready to go. Uh, so you can have, um, you know, gigahertz band. And I do think that, you know, yeah, you can use the NR5253 or 91, but it'll probably get ported to other chips as well. So your IMX series, maybe your RP2040 uh, could all take advantage of this. Um, and DigiKeys carries the fan style module. So when they exist, I'm sure DigiKeys is going to stock them. Um, there's also a couple blog posts that I checked out weren't too bad. There's the, um, you know, step-by-step -step instructions on how to uh, implement MQTT with the NRF50, NRF uh, 7002 on that DK. Um, they also have a, a nifty um, provisioner app. So because they're kind of expecting you to run this on their cellular or Bluetooth um, uh, capable chipsets as like the host controller, you can then use their provisioner and like they have like quick code that you, you know, just kind of link in. And now you can um, put in the Wi-Fi credentials for like a device for a product via the the BLE and it kind of all happens all magically um so you don't have to write that part of your your code but you take advantage of like oh wait. instead of doing the access point thing which you can do but I find very annoying um you can use bluetooth instead and then finally um I did, did see also Goliath which is a uh friends the fruit uh and they have a um, IoT service uh they did a really nice step-by-step -step tutorial on using Zephyr um, with the NRF 7002 connecting to their uh, API and then doing uh, remote procedure calls back and forth to your main board. So um, it didn't look too bad. It was like, oh, you just have to clone Zephyr and then you run it. It's, it's very advanced. It's a very powerful uh, programming system and uh, debug framework. Available on DigiKey. Yes. And so. they're in stock, although it didn't load look like. But um, there were 5,000 in stock earlier. You have to press refresh letter um but uh they're five thousand stock a uh, couple bucks a piece uh and the valve boards are not in stock yet but they will be soon all right and they have a short video we're going to play that and then we're going to jump right into top secret which we have a bunch of stuff and get to your questions hi let me introduce you to nordic's first wi-fi solutions the NF7002 Dual Band Wi-Fi 6 Companion IC and the NF7002 Development Kit finally available for anyone to start developing. The NF7002 is Nordic's first Wi-Fi product. It is the Wi-Fi 6 companion IC, adding Wi-Fi connectivity to a host processor. As with all of our products, our focus for the NF7002 was on what we do best, low power wireless. It takes advantage of the new low power features introduced in Wi-Fi 6. Target wake time allows the client device using the NF7002 to negotiate a wake up schedule with the access point it is connected to. This gives you excellent control over the responsiveness and power consumption of your Wi Fi devices. Orthogonal frequency division multiple access, or OFDMA, divides up the channel bandwidth to allow multiple devices access simultaneously. A Wi Fi channel can be divided into several subcarriers. This is super useful for dense deployments with many devices that don't need to send too much data, like sensor arrays. Not all current Wi-Fi networks out there are Wi-Fi 6 capable. That's why we've made the NF7002 backwards compatible with older standards. This enables you to build a device that can be implemented into most existing networks. For similar reasons, we also made the NF7002 dual band capable, supporting 2.4 and 5 GHz. This gives the advantage of higher 5 GHz speeds and the less congested band or use the 2.4 GHz for better range. In summary, this enables you to build versatile products that integrate into most...